Hello, my friends, it's Danny, and today I wanted to share six weight loss tips that help me lose weight in a healthy, sustainable way. Now, these are more natural, holistic tips. These are not your everyday dietary weight loss tips because I think we hear so many of those already, and I wanted to dig a little deeper to some of the practices that I feel like really made a huge difference for me when I finally lost weight. Because remember, for many years, I was a yo-yo dieter and I did all the things, but I still couldn't quite figure out what was blocking me from making that change. And so here are some of the tips that I feel like made a huge difference for me. And so many of them were mental. So the first tip is to recognize that weight loss can only do one thing, and that is to have you lose weight right? Weight loss has one job, that is to make you weigh less. Weight loss cannot make you happier, more whole, more valuable, more worthy. And I think a lot of times, especially because of the society we live in and all of the pressure that is put on us around our bodies, we think that we cannot be happy, whole, valuable, and worthy in a body that we don't prefer or in a body that we feel is overweight. Right, But when you're coming from a place of, I am broken and I need to fix this, you are constantly working against yourself. And even if you do lose the weight from that premise, you will never feel successful because losing weight cannot in and of itself make you any happier or more fulfilled as a person, right? That is emotional work that needs to be done outside of weight loss. And oftentimes weight loss can be a byproduct of doing that emotional work first. We have to remember that the journey informs the destination. So we need to come from a place of um, love, unconditional love, and showing up for ourselves in a really kind, loving way exactly where we are, even when we're not where we want to be. Tip number two is to remember that there is no wagon. Anybody who is a dieter or who has tried many diets in the past, we know that mentality where we're on the wagon, we're off the wagon, we're on the wagon, we're off the wagon, right? We're, we try to make the changes and then the minute we go off the plan or off what we had um, intended for ourselves, then we tell ourselves we're off the wagon. But the problem with this thought process is one, it's rooted in perfection and it's very unrealistic because because no matter what, if you are going to lose weight over a period of time, it is not a perfect linear path. And what happens is, is when you tell yourself that the minute you eat the ice cream or the donut or the thing that was not on the plan, that you're now off the wagon, it then encourages more bad behavior. And I, lose, I use that term loosely, but it's this idea that I ruined it, it's off the wagon, and so, What's the point? And that can send us into a day, two days, a week, a month, right, of spiraling in a direction of continuing to eat poorly and not focusing on the goals that we've set for ourselves because we feel like, oh, it's not working anyway, right? So instead of thinking of a wagon, you just wanna think this is a continuum. And if I slip up or when I make a decision that's not aligned with my plan, I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna learn from it. And I'm gonna use this as a part of my journey forward. I'm not gonna use it as a reason to stop and I'm not gonna use it as a reason to quit. This is a part of the journey, nothing has gone wrong. Tip number three, and I will say this was one of the biggest mental shifts for me, I know I've shared it before, but what I started to do was instead of focusing on all of the foods that I believed I needed to restrict and deprive myself of, all the things I needed to take away from my diet, which feels like a constant state of like scarcity, I began to focus on all of the foods I got to include, right? And that made it fun. It made it more like a game. I started thinking, hmm, what can I try? What's in season? Uh, what did I see in that magazine or on that healthy blog, right? And then it became like this playful experiment and and it didn't feel like a like punishment. It actually was enjoyable and something that I looked forward to. So focusing on all of the foods that you get to include in, maybe experimenting with a couple new things every week, making that commitment to yourself can really create a mental shift around weight loss and make it a lot more enjoyable and a lot more sustainable. 
Tip number four, which piggybacks off of tip number three, is the crowd out technique. Again, when we are making changes, a lot of times we are thinking that we have to do this huge overhaul and we want to change everything overnight. But the truth is creating new habits takes time and it takes practice. So a really great way to do that is to use the crowd out technique. Again, instead of saying, I'm not going to eat this or I'm not going to eat that, make a small commitment like I am going to include two vegetables on my lunch plate every single day. And you practice that for one week, two weeks, three weeks, until it becomes so natural and so habitual to you that it doesn't feel like trying anymore. It's just something that you do. And then once that happens, you pick something else to invite onto your plate or into your kitchen or into your day-to-day -day habits, right? So maybe it's drinking more water or working in a certain amount of movement every day. And you just focus on that one thing and as you focus on that one thing, other things start to fall away. So again, it's a mental shift because instead of focusing on things that we think we can't do or we shouldn't do, we're bringing in habits that we want to do and then just letting the other ones be slightly crowded out a bit. It's a much more gentle approach and again, it is a much more enjoyable approach. Number five, focus on your commitments instead of your results, right? So many people, when it comes to weight loss, we think that the number on the scale dictates whether or not we have had any success or if we're moving in the right direction. But as we know, bodies are fluid and ever moving and scales are you know, not linear. They move up and down on a weight loss journey. And so it can become very discouraging when you're using only the scale to decide whether or not you have moved towards your goal. When you make the shift to focusing on your commitments to yourself, that gives you a lot more control over the day to day, right? So if your commitment is, hey, I'm going to drink four glasses of water today, or hey, I'm going to move my body for 30 minutes today, or I'm going to put two servings of vegetable on my lunch plate every day, right? You have something very clear, very specific to focus on. And then you know whether or not you have been successful that day by your ability to honor the commitment that you made to yourself. So it becomes a much more tangible way to see if you're making success because at the end of the day, weight loss over the long haul comes down to those day-to-day -day practices, those day-to-day -day habits. And so when you are making a habit for that day and paying attention to that day, those are the small wins that add up over time. And might I also add, that is how motivation is fed, right? Often people say, well, how can I get more motivated? How do you motivate yourself? And I personally have found that motivation is often a byproduct of results. We don't usually start out motivated, or maybe we do for the first few days, but what tends to get us motivated is when we are having results. So if you have the results of honoring your commitment, seven, 10 days, how good that starts to feel. You start to feel motivated, you start to build momentum, and that again makes everything more enjoyable, more pleasurable, and therefore more sustainable. And the final tip I wanna share with you today, the sixth tip, is to be reflective and not rejective, right? So when you are not able to stick to your intentions, when you, you find that you were not able to commit to the things you set out for yourself, instead of using that as a reason to reject yourself and turn your back on yourself and tell yourself you're not capable or that you're a failure or this is just something you're not able to do, use it as an invitation to stay soft and compassionate and curious. Imagine every single time you make a turn that was off the path, you wanted to learn from it, right? That you wanted to understand it more instead of just labeling it as a problem and rejecting the whole thing. You would, in the long run, make so much more further forward progress, right? Weight loss is not only about the the weight falling off your body or the number of the scale going down. It's about the relationship that we get to foster with ourselves. And when you bring that to the forefront and you remember that, again, it's a huge shift in the weight loss journey. So much of what I wanted to share here today, as you can see, is really reflective of the mental aspects of weight loss. Yes, there are definitely action steps we can take on our plates and with our food, and it, that's different for everybody. But if you can't get the mental game straight right? If you can't be on your own side and be in this for the long run, I don't care what you put on your plate. You're always going to have to come back to the drawing board to deal with you. 
I would actually go so far to say that I think for many people, the weight loss journey is only about learning how to foster a kinder, more loving relationship with themselves and their bodies. But again, that's just a little food for thought. So um, I hope that some of these tips resonated with you. If you're interested in more videos like this, please come down to the comments below and let me know. This is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. So I do love to share and to chat with you guys about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees and I will see you back here next time with some more food for thought. Good. And three, two.